Hi friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to start some Lucinda Berry books. Specifically, I'm going to start with Saving Noah. A lot of my friends have been reading Lucinda Berry books and recommending them to me. Specifically, Jesse has been trying to get me to read The Perfect Child for a few years now. And I'm just really excited to dive into these thrillers and see what all the hype is about. I'm actually going to start with Saving Noah. It's the one I've been hearing the most recent buzz about, but I'm going to be reading all four of these in this reading vlog. I know a lot of you guys are super excited for this because you've been waiting for me to do this. Now is the time. So I have Saving Noah by Lucinda Berry. I have The Secrets of Us by Lucinda Berry. I have When She Returned and The Perfect Child. Of course, all of these are Lucinda Berry books, so I'm very excited. I'm going to start saving Noah tonight, put the rest on the back burner for now, and as I read and have thoughts, I will, of course, update you. <laughs> the book <laughs> I definitely was not expecting to read this in one sitting even though it is short it was already later in the evening and yeah I read this in one sitting it's just over 250 pages so under 300 pages it definitely has some hard themes and topics in it it's it's classified as a thriller on Goodreads. I would say it's more of like a family drama with some very heavy hitting topics. And this is my first Lucinda Berry book. So what a way to kick off this vlog. Um, in this one, you follow a mother that, it's really about a mother-son relationship. Her son ends up um, admitting to molesting young girls during swim team practice and she approaches the families about it. He gets arrested. He ends up going to a juvenile sexual rehabilitation center and of course the father is disgusted. His younger sister has no idea and the mother is just in turmoil because she loves her son and she wants what's best for him. She wants him to be given a second chance. She wants him to have a life after this and she just loves him unconditionally. She realizes what he did was horrific but she loves him. And this story takes place after the events. Um, it's basically he's getting released from the Juvenile Sexual Rehabilitation Center. Uh, she's been told he is like a model patient and they have a plan in place in case, you know, things go awry once he gets out. Um, but the father is very like against him being around his sister because his sister is a young girl. So the mom ends up getting an apartment separate and they're still like a family but he just kind of wants um, Noah away from his sister. Um, so the mom sets up an apartment and she's like I'll live with Noah you live with the daughter I forget her name. So yeah he gets out he goes to the house and the thing is is that Noah is very well known and he was very well liked and even though that they have moved from the original town where it happened to a new town you know people learn the things. There's Facebook pages about them and all of that and just horrific stuff starts going down and it's like what links will the mother go to protect her son um, and it's just it's very hard to read about obviously because it's about him being a child. Charlie <laughs> um, it's like a child molesting younger children and Lucinda Berry 
is a trauma psychologist and leading researcher in childhood trauma. So she kind of knows what she's talking about with this. And it just went in directions that I couldn't have imagined. Um, and you're just reading it so quickly, you don't have time to sit there and think about things until it's all over. And I know a lot of people complained about like it being too short and about not showing certain aspects of the story. But I think that this is a slice of life story into, okay, I'm gonna show you this time frame and not the whole story so that it leaves a lot of food for thought. And you think about this and you talk with this with other readers about what would you do in this situation? What do you think happened with that? That sort of thing. And I just think it was like brilliantly done. It gave you just enough to make you really think holy crap, what would I do in this situation while well, not like dragging out the story? So suffice it to say, lots of content warnings in this one. Definitely do your own research, but I'm rating this story five out of five stars. Great start to the vlog. <laughs> So I'm currently reading The Perfect Child. I started this yesterday and I'm reading it physically without an audiobook. Um, it was really, really nice outside yesterday. So I took it outside and read quite a bit. I read some when I was cooking dinner last night. I read some after dinner. I read some before bed. I read some when I woke up. And now here we are, I am on page 258. And let me just tell you, this book is wild. It is wild. I just, I'm terrified for this family. Um, I don't wanna say too much, but basically you have these two um, doctors. One is a surgeon, one is a nurse. I'm Christopher and Hannah, and they have this like picture perfect life. They have really good jobs, they have a nice house, their family's great, they're close with their families, they have a nice group of friends, um, but they are having trouble conceiving and they're on the path to adoption after several failed IVFs. Um, they're considering international adoption and all of that. Well, well, oh, and they also work kind of different shifts. She works, I think, during the day. Or no, she works at night and he works during the day. Um, so she's working and he's at home, I guess. And this child comes in, like this really small child. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's abuse. Like they found her wandering around in this parking lot with nothing on but a diaper. She had like blood on her and stuff. And she was acting... Like they had difficulty like getting her in the car and getting her to the ER. Um, Hannah doesn't get to see her or anything like that. Um, she goes home, she meets up with her husband as he's, you know, headed off to work and he's asking her about her day. And then right before he goes to the door, she's like, oh yeah, this small child came in. Um, and then it's interesting because he, since he's a surgeon and after they kind of looked over the girl and stuff like that, they found that she had like several broken bones and, you know, things like that. And that he was going to be the, he was asked to be the doctor in charge of her surgery. Um, like basically, I guess she had a previous injury in her arm and it healed wrong and they needed to like re-break it and reset it and he was the doctor on that. Um, it seemed like she was okay around all of the nurses and all of the people coming in and stuff like that. There were definitely people that the child was better with, like nicer to. There were other people like she just wouldn't talk to them and stuff like that, but she really latched on to Dr. Chris and um, he did the surgery that went really well and she was in the hospital for a while and over that time uh christopher really started getting attached to Janie, and um 
then he wanted Hannah, his wife, to meet Janie. And they kind of all became this little, like on their breaks and stuff, they would go down to visit her in her room. Um, and meanwhile, there's an investigation going on, like where did this child come from? Who's her mom? What happened? Does she have any family? Like what's going on? Um, and without like, you know, spoiling anything, they basically decide to adopt her, um, to foster her. And then they end up adopting her. But she, the girl, obviously Janie has a lot of issues and, um, it gets dark. You guys, it gets really, really dark. Um, there is two there are two as of this moment right now two animal scenes that i just can't imagine and it reminds me a little bit of the push but it's also like very very different um at the same time but like this one is way darker like way darker um, and it's just, they're going to like all these therapy appointments and trying to figure out like how they can help her and try to figure out what's wrong with her. And it just keeps getting slowly worse and worse and worse. All right, friends, I just finished The Perfect Child and this was heavy. I'm gonna say even heavier than Saving Noah was. Um, I don't know if it was the length or the subject matter. This one just dealt with like one thing, you know? Um, and it was over <laughs> soon, I don't know. I, but this one, <sighs> Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you guys like how disturbing this book is. Very dark themes, very dark themes. Um, but well written and well researched and no fluff. Uh, I mean, at no point are you just like, oh, can we get to the next part of the story or anything like that? Like, it's fascinating. I can't tell you guys the last time I read a 350 plus page book with my eyeballs um in such a short amount of time i started this yesterday afternoon it's 154 today so in less than 24 hours i read this entire book and it had like a heavy subject matter it's just crazy i i i'm almost speechless with like how it ended um, I will say I'm not like a super fan of the way it ended, but it was really, it, <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm not a super fan of the way it ended because I would have liked to seen like, I would have liked to have read a happy ending, but like, how the F do you get a happy ending from this? You know, you just can't. Um, it was just crazy like my eyes are wide open now you know what i'm saying like it is just i can't I, I have literally no words all right so these are the two books that i have left uh before i close out and start the next book i want to say that mothers especially mothers of young children do not read this book it's very disturbing and I would highly recommend you not put yourself through this. I think if you want something that's similar, but not as hard, but also still very hard, um, you could try to read The Push by Ashley Aldrain. Um, but that's also very dark and disturbing. But if you've read that, this one is more dark and disturbing. So take that for what you will this one is really really dark anyway i have two more 
books. Um, I have When She Returned and The Secrets of Us. And this one is about a woman returning from a cult, possibly. Uh, it says Katie Burnett vanished from a parking lot 11 years ago, leaving behind her husband and young daughter. When she shows up at the Montana gas station, clutching an infant and screaming for help, investigators believe she may have been abducted by a cult. And then this one is about foster sisters. And I just don't think I can do this one right after the perfect child. So I'm going to read this one and then this will be what we finish the vlog off with. <laughs> All right, I'm here with a reading update of When She Returned by Lucinda Berry. I started this yesterday after The Perfect Child, but I actually didn't read too much. And it's not immediately as gripping as Saving Noah and The Perfect Child was, but it's building a really good story already. It's told in multiple POV. It starts with the mother, Kate, um with her baby Shiloh I think is how you say it um they are escaping like the woods and they're like coming out to this gas station and then it flips to Abby which is Kate's daughter from before like I guess she was like around like five years old when she went missing and then it also has the I don't know if it has the dads I think it's just all the women so you have the prologue which is Kate. Then you have Abby, which is the daughter. Meredith, which is the dad's new wife. So he remarried. Yeah. And that's all. Um, interesting. Kate, Abby, and Meredith. Um, but I am on page 47. And I'm hoping to get some reading done today. That's the plan. <laughs> I was reading before I'm getting ready to leave. I made it to page 210. So I have about 70 pages left. So I'm definitely going to finish this today. If you're looking for a book with cult vibes, that one definitely has more than vibes. All right, I'm finished at my chiropractor appointment. Um, I was gonna update you with like a few more thoughts. Um, it's like the storyline of Abby and Meredith and even Scott, even though we don't get his perspective, is starting from when they get Kate back, when Kate is found. Um, so that's going from that perspective. But then Kate's perspective is starting from when things happened like where did she go what happened who kidnapped her did she run away all of that her time within the cult all of that so that's starting at the beginning and so it's kind of like this weird like where one timeline is starting here but one timeline is starting here and they're kind of converging like somewhere in the middle um anyway and i have um heard and i have read some reviews that said that there is like a twist you know like towards the end but it seems like people still didn't you know connect to this one or like this one as much as um her previous books that i read i'm saving noah and the perfect child um but it still has a really high rating on goodreads um this one has a come on this one has a 4.06 with 32,000 ratings. So it's still really high. Um, I probably will not give it that high of a rating. I definitely will not give it a five at this point. Um, just because 
it has been very like it's not even 300 pages and I think this is like my third day reading it just because I'm never like compelled to pick it up and then when I pick it up I mean I'm reading it it's okay I'm just not like really invested to kind of see where it goes good news bad news I finished when she returned and I'm rating this story two out of five stars it is well under 300 pages it's 287 pages and it felt so long um what can i say nothing happened in the present <laughs> um it was all about what happened and where kate has been it's cultish related and like I said they find her at the beginning of the book she's like at this gas station she's running with this baby they caught they reach out to Scott and they bring her back to Scott's house in California because she was like in Montana or I forget where they were but they weren't in California so they moved they moved her back to California and I think for a few weeks, like the FBI and stuff like that was like in the house and had cameras and tapped the phone and all this. But then after they realized a certain thing about the case, they kind of dispersed. And then you're just left with Abby and her dad and her stepmom and her mom all in the house. And things are just tense because Kate's not admitting to anything and Abby's wanting to develop a relationship with her mom because she doesn't really know anything about her mom because like when her mom had disappeared um she was only like five years old also it was just terribly predictable and boring like literally nothing happened <laughs> I'm here with a reading update of The Secrets of Us by Lucinda Berry. I am currently on chapter 16, page 111, and my goal is to finish this one today. I'm definitely not enjoying this one as much as Saving Noah and The Perfect Child, but I'm not disliking it as much as when she returned. Uh, this one is told in dual POV between Crystal and Nicole. Crystal is in the present and uh, Nicole's chapters are um, from the past. So these are two girls that have been put in a foster home. They became sisters. Um, they had a really hard upbringing. They've kind of hidden their past. Um, you know, as they like went to college and stuff like that. Um, but now in the present, Nicole like set fire to her house with her husband inside on purpose. And now Crystal is trying to figure out what the heck. Um, she's, she's been put in a psychiatric hospital and we're just trying to build the case from there like what happened it seems like she's had a psychotic break of some sort and we're trying to figure that all out great news friends i finished the secrets of us by lucinda berry so that's the fourth book i've read and i'll tell you about my thoughts about this and then i'll tell you my thoughts like overall i think i'm gonna rate this one three out of five stars because it was readable. You're trying to figure out like what happened, what put Nicole in this psychiatric hospital, what happened with the fire, is her, you know, husband okay? What, why did she seem to like want to kill him? Um, just kind of like all of these mysterious things. You're getting things from the past when they were in foster care and then obviously in the present day where Crystal's trying to help her sister Nicole while she's in a psychiatric hospital. Um, and then things get revealed about the past, things get revealed in the present, and all of that. Um, I will just say that it 
I can see myself forgetting this one. Um, it wasn't very like memorable. It's not going to stick out in my mind. Uh, the writing was good. It had some interesting psychological bits in it. Again, um, Lucinda Berry, Dr. Lucinda Berry is a former psychologist. So she knows what she's talking about with some of these things. Some of the things that she mentions like could be aged. And she even talks about that like, oh, it used to be called asylums but now they're called this and i'm sure things have changed since she's written this um so it'd be very interesting to get a person in this field now um to talk about some of the things talked about in her books um but yeah i just see this one as being forgettable but it was an enjoyable read so i will say that um, of all of the books that I read, my two favorites were Saving Noah and The Perfect Child. Um, this one, if you're looking for a quick disturbing read, read this one. Um, and this is a longer disturbing read. Um, I would say that some people are probably going to complain about this because you don't get enough of the incident itself not necessarily like the molestation but more from noah and how he was feeling maybe why he did what he did uh, i don't know but i could see some people saying that like there wasn't enough information in this but i thought there was like just enough to like keep you intrigued and make people want to talk about it um and kind of let you form your own decisions like here's what happened and now how do you feel about that that sort of thing whereas the perfect child definitely does go more in depth it's obviously a much longer story um it's about like 100 pages longer um but it is very 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 dark um and i would definitely i mean none of these books can i necessarily recommend you could tell the care that goes into her stories the way she crafts them you can tell that her stories are purposeful um you can tell like this one's longer because she had a longer story to tell and you can tell that this one is shorter on purpose and doesn't maybe give you all the parts that you would want from a story like this like on purpose um so i will say that her work is very purposeful i am definitely interested in completing her backlist and also i know she has a new book coming out this year but i would say overall it was a success i'm definitely interested in reading more of her books but as it stands right now these in my opinion are the best of the best but highly highly disturbing like i said so let me know what you think if you've read this author let me know what your favorite book is by her um let me know which ones you recommend let me know if you agree with my opinions on the ones that i have read but yeah i did it guys my lucinda berry vlog anyway i hope you enjoyed i hope you're having a lovely day or night and i'll see you guys again in another video very soon bye guys